So I will be hosting my first open house tomorrow. Where are we at? One Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? I'm good. Oh, look at Miss Cheryl. She survived jello shots. <laughs> Sorry, it's super noisy in here. Did you survive jello shots? Some of them. I have some of them that are like um, the watermelon ones are good. The cherry ones are horrible. They are like rocket fuel. <laughs> Ooh. I'm feeling that today, but um, yeah, we're this is we're in Nashville. It's very echoey in here in this hallway. We got this whole hallway to ourselves with five different rooms for everybody. We got a like a community, our own for us community um, kitchen and washer and dryer and a patio. <laughs> wow, very <laughs> cool. Yeah, we planned to Uber, you know, downtown. We stayed in last night and just kind of hung out here, but we got railroad tracks. Yeah, like I got, shit, like, everybody say hi. Hi. Say hi. 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 My cousin. <laughs> Happy birthday. My brother from another mother, my real brother. <laughs> and, and the cool birthday space. girl's in bed. So. We're not doing anything. Yeah, he's got the big ball of vodka there. So, have vodka, so. hey, you know it's five o'clock somewhere. Yeah, so I was like, hey, it's, it's eight o'clock here. I said, like, ooh, I'm gonna log in real quickly to the Zoom meeting because everybody's running around and it's super noisy in here. Super awesome. Super. Well, Dominique, Jessica, how are you guys this morning? How was your Friday? Friday was fine. I am 
I just picked up an open house for tomorrow. So, ah. Oh, awesome. Very yeah. Cool. I usually try and do a little more prep, like starting Thursday, Friday, but you know, hey, whatever Saturday morning, we'll figure it out. <laughs> it, yeah. You know, uh, hop on Mojo and invite all the neighbors. Yeah. There I, you go. I'm going to do door knocking. So that'll work. Oh, that'll work too. Yeah. I love that. That was the only time I ever door knocked was I would invite people with that. You know, I, I find most people like to pick their own neighbors, you know, pick their new neighbors. Yeah. Yep. Love it. Good morning, awesome. Joe. Morning. How are you? How was your weekend? How was your Friday? Your weekend? It's not weekend yet. How was your Friday? It was good. We're actually off this weekend from baseball. So. Oh, baseball. Make sure you wear a Keller Williams name tag or Kelly Williams shirt. I don't think I've met Joe yet. Cheryl, Jessica, Dominique, meet Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Hi. Morning. Joe, what office are you in? AW South. Cool. I'm in Northeast, so. Okay. Nice to meet everybody. Mm -hmm. Dominic's in Louisville. We have a variety. Good morning, Miss Shelby. Good morning. It's been a see, long, a long I'll time. I'll tell you what, this is a really good time. So while everybody pops in, see, I'm realizing that there's lots of new faces. Cheryl, have you met Shelby yet? I have not met Shelby yet. I think oh, Dominic yeah. and Shelby may have met. So, oh, I tell you what, today, today, this is what I want you to do. I want you to give me your win, your challenge, what office you're with, and what your plan is for the weekend, because it's beautiful. And it's warmer in Nashville too. Nah, sorry. <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be beautiful here. I have no complaints. Okay. So who wants to go first? Win, challenge, office, weekend plans. All right. Dominique had her hand up first. Go dear. Yes. I'll go first. Um, my name is Dominique. I'm from Louisville East. Um, my win is that I I'm going to be hosting my first open house tomorrow as well. Yay! Um, my challenge is that I literally just told um, the other agent that I would do it at nine o'clock last night. So I've been trying to get everything together. You and Jessica can mastermind here for a minute. I love for real. That. Call me. Yeah. So other than other than your weekend. Other way, other than the open house this weekend, what else you got planned for the weekend? Um, I don't have anything planned. That's my tunnel vision right now. <laughs> That's your weekend, I love that. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Does anybody have some advice for for Dominique? She she scheduled an open house last night for tomorrow. Make sure it's in my bar. Um, Glar. Glar. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So make sure the agent that you scheduled it with, put it in the multiple listing service that the open house is scheduled. That's a good, a good tip. She did. Yes. She did. Okay. Put it on your Facebook. Yes. I have an event. Um, I've posted on all of my social medias um, today. After this meeting, I'm going to go into the office and print off some flyers and I'm going to the neighborhood immediately after. Awesome. And the, and the, the, the line that I like to use when I door knock the neighborhood is, Hi, you know, this is Dominique. I'm having an open house at your neighbor's house that's for sale. So first of all, I wanted to invite you to come and see it and and, and please give uh, provide the seller some feedback of what what you know what you think. But also I find most people like to um, they like to pick their new neighbors. So if you mm -hmm. have friends or family that might be interested in living in the neighborhood and being your neighbor and you'd like them to be, then why don't you invite them to come as well? Right? Right. That's my script. I haven't done that in a while, but that came out pretty all right. It's the nice thing about, that's the nice thing about scripts is once you practice them enough, even it's like riding a bike, they still come out. It's pretty awesome. Um, okay. Um, other tips, signs. Do you have signs? I'm going to get that while I'm out as well. Um, I did not have a chance to, my market center closed. So the signs that they have in there for us to use as new agents, I won't be able to get those. So I'm just going to go buy some. I'll have them yeah, for myself. It's office or um, Lowe's or Home Depot. They, they have the little cheapies. And, mm -hmm. and the other thing that you might do is 
tomorrow morning, you might go get a couple of balloons from the dollar store and hang okay. on a couple of them because that draws people's attention. Okay. So that's another good Could you good put way. a shout out to one, some of the other agents there, like a, a group message if anybody's got any, <clears throat> you could borrow, make it a little maybe easier on you or? What is it? I'm sorry. Uh, I was like, could you just put a shout out to like the other agents there nearby you to see if they've got any that maybe you could borrow so you wouldn't yeah. have to go. That's the other thing. You could oh. pop them out on your Facebook, your Facebook resource page. And okay. Add. Yeah, that's a good idea. Thanks, Cheryl. That's an awesome idea. Thank you. Um, and then, and then how many people do you have in your database, Don, Dominique, that are local? Um, well, all of them are 23. I was 23. planning on sending out a text message with the open house picture that I had. Happy Derby, you know, before you head to the day party, come see me. Yes. Or also I'm having my first open house. Come see me. Yeah. I'm excited. Right. Yes. And then the sign-in sheets are important. Yeah. Yes, in your yes. in the, in the PC library, dear, and there's a folder for open houses, mm -hmm. and there is a sign-in sheet there that I really like. Some people, and if you watch the open house video, some people take a tablet and let people sign in. I think, especially with COVID right now, their own form is important. And I got I I can't reach them right now, but I got little clipboards at the dollar store. Okay. So I just put a sheet on a clipboard with a pen, and when they come in, I hand it to them, and I ask them. Um, if they wouldn't mind, because it's like a, it's more about the house or it has about half about the house, half about them. And I always say, could you fill this out? This is going to be really helpful for the sellers. And then when you get all done, you put the contact information at the top and cut off and scan the rest of it to the agent, the listing agent. That way they can have feedback for their sellers. Okay. So awesome. I'm excited. I'm excited Thanks. for you. All right, Jessica, win challenge, what <laughs> office you're with and... Uh, what are your plans for the weekend? I'm Jessica. I'm with Indy Metro Northeast. My win is we got an offer accepted last night. So I'm dropping off earnest money today and I'm doing an open house tomorrow. So wow, crazy Yay. stuff. Yay. My <laughs> challenge is I have a gentleman who lives out of town and he's selling his yeah. mother's home, but he is so slow. I'm trying to help kind of poke him through the process of the, you've got to clean the home out. We've got to make a few minor repairs. We've got to move forward on this. It's like everything. You send an email, you send a text message, you leave a voicemail and it's two weeks later, he follows up. Boy, property, ta property taxes are due May 10th. Well, I told him, I said, as long as you're staying, you're keeping this house, you're paying insurance, utilities, and taxes. You tell him they're due May you know, 10th. You I mean, he's gonna have to pay the May 10th taxes anyways. It really doesn't matter, but you well, yeah, but still it might be a nice just, jolt. Just a reminder, May the property taxes are due May 10th. Okay. Would you would you like to get this? Would you like to get this under contract so that's not your, your responsibility? Yeah. Which is true because the title company will take care of it then. Mm -hmm. That's true. So there's that, but this weekend I'm obviously having an open house and there is a little brewery in my town that's having their third year anniversary. So I'm going to that tonight. Yay, beer. Ooh, girl. Very cool. We should have lots of good videos tonight, right? Live Facebook videos. Hey, live Facebook live. Maybe. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I, I, uh, I missed out on the opportunity. I, I, we, we, uh, prepped and, and primed yesterday at the building. Um, um, and I did not do a Facebook live because my phone died and I didn't have a charger with me, but my daughter, there's a TikTok that went out on the staging in home. You'll have to watch it. It's pretty funny. Okay. Who's next? When challenge, what office you're in and your weekend plans. I'll go next. Okay, Joe. So I'm with the uh, KW South office and my win this week was is that I made five phone calls and sent out 10 postcards or 10 note cards. And my challenge is wow. to just, yeah, thank you, is to uh, just keep working on my um, database and dedicating time through the week. Uh, my full-time job keeps getting in the way. And then <clears throat> my plans for this weekend is to uh, keep working on my son's house. So. Yeah, you got a full schedule between your full-time job, your renovation project, and baseball, yeah. you said, so. Baseball, seven days a week, but we're off this weekend, so I'm very happy. 
Yeah, so that that is challenging, but I love the fact that you're getting that in. So Joe, do you have it on your calendar then? Did you find a time on your calendar where you could dedicate in the, the evening or is that how yes, you got through exactly. your calls and database? I love that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm gonna try and start maybe on one time I'm making a phone call each day. <clears throat> so. Just like it's eating an elephant, right? One one at a time. As long as we stay consistent and focused, that's awesome. All right, who's next? Win, yes. challenge, office, plans. I'll go next. Um, you know, I've had a really busy week, so I haven't really donated a lot of time or spent a lot of time on real estate. So, you know, I don't have a lot to share on that. I do have um, a really small win. So today I'm showing a couple homes for Cheryl because she's out of town. Awesome. Um, but the people are on a, um, they have a USDA loan. And um, so we were trying to figure out how we could find out homes they were eligible for because we had a showing set up yesterday and then it turned out that home wasn't eligible for their loan. Um, so I simply Googled it and I just wanted to give everybody the information that um, if you look up the website is usdaloans.com and you can simply put in the address and it tells you what, that whether that address is eligible for a US loan or not. Now I'm a girl, you know, in any way guarantee that information, but it's enough to, you know, go ahead and do showings and then you can check with your lender, you know. I love that. Great. But yeah, awesome. usdaloans.com. So um, it, yeah, it's easy, easy, easy. So yeah, yeah Cheryl, I had no idea when Cheryl asked me that question. So I love. <laughs> I knew I picked cool. the right person for this. I knew I did. I knew. I, I, I got. I got. To, I got to tell you the one thing I'll tell you that you, somebody. Uh, I got a message yesterday. Or this I saw it this morning. I got it yesterday when my phone was dead, and the way I find <clears throat> most things that I get asked, the way I find it is I ask Google. Right? She is my number That's one. Is Google a he or a she? Anyways. And they, they are my number one resource, right? Because all you have to do is Google it. And nine times out of 10, you can find it. So if it's a command question, I Google what? David, who knows what I Google when if it's a command question? Marty Annie, Miller. I was going to say, Annie's laughing. She knows the answer. Yeah. I Marty, Marty Miller. Miller 66 Marty Miller, yeah. yeah. Smart plans. Marty Miller's 66 days referrals, Marty Miller's 66 days designs, whatever it is that I need, I type, that's what I type because I know it's gonna give me a Marty Miller video and that's gonna help me, but but yeah. But you can type in KW command, you can type in. You, you know. can type in just a question, like how do I get to, you know, how do I find this in command, in KW command and Google will tell you. You yeah. know, and then if you need more information, then you can go into the Marty Miller. But if it's if it's just a simple question, how do I get here? You can Google it. It's in there. It's crazy. No, it's, it's awesome. The resources, right? So you got Google as your resource. You got your PC library as a resource. You know, it's good, 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 good reminder. Awesome. All right. All right. Well, then challenge. Was that your chat? That was your win. That was my win. Uh, my challenge is just again, you know, um, but next week my schedule is almost clear as far as appointments go. I do have like four people that are in and out of the hospital right now. And I had a, a DCS report yesterday. So, I mean, it still continues to be crazy, but um, I just feel that this is just something I just got to, you know, keep pushing through and it's going to open up for me. So okay. next week, I, I'm time blocked again, as long as there's no more emergencies. <laughs> um, but um, I am time blocked in, and have a really good plan because I know everything I'm supposed to do. I just haven't been able to do it yet. So I have faith, though. Yeah, well, I, wanted to, I wanted to add something to Annie there, too, because um, the person that she's working with, it, it's, my, it's my cousin's son and his wife. And they called me like Thursday night at six o'clock and they're like, we want to go see this house. You know, we've been through two realtors. I was like, well, you've got the right person now. But I was like, unfortunately, I'm going out of town. I did send them the buyer's agency agreement. They have not assigned it. And I told Annie that, but I'm, this is how I feel about it. If you're doing all this work, you've done all this research. And if they look at these houses today and they want to put the offer on that, I feel like you should be the agent to do that. And then if you want to do a referral for me, I'm fine with that because you're doing all the work. I'm just sitting here watching in the background. So that's, that's kind of how I feel oh. about the situation. So, and I think that could be a win for you too, because you literally are doing all the work. So, well, thank you. Wow. You're thank welcome. You. I mean, you, I mean, you look up the houses for them too. So 
Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, and we'll just see how it goes. You know, I mean, thank you, Cheryl. That's awesome. You're well, um, thank you, because we couldn't do it without you, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm showing them three today, and they're kind of out. Well, because they're out rural homes, they're out, out in three different areas. <laughs> yeah, you're everywhere, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so that's Very nice. Cool. Teamwork. All right. Well, other than showing houses, Annie, what else you got planned for the weekend? Um, let me see. Last last night was very cool. I went to my aunt and uncle's sixty first anniversary dinner. Oh, how cool! Um, and it was really. I mean, it was just wonderful because my aunt um, is pretty out of it, but my uncle was sitting there feeding her <laughs> anniversary cake. I mean, it was just it was just beautiful. But anyways. Um, other than that, um, I'm hoping to get my lawn mowed. I was just out there doing it some of it this morning. <laughs> I've got some yard work and planning to do. And um, and then I'm getting together with some friends, you know, for a cookout. Very so, cool. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. By the way, I'm at, um, you know, Indy, um, Indy Metro South, but really at the Franklin office, Keller Williams. So it's kind of a combination. We're under Indy Metro South. Um, Center. Yes. What, what else was I supposed to say? One other thing? Oh, what I was doing? Your okay. win. Awesome. All right. <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, Cheryl, you're going to go. Your win, your yep. challenge. Yep. Um, what you're doing this weekend and what office you're with. Right. Okay. Well, um, I'm Cheryl Radke with Indy Metro South. Um, I guess my wins this week are that I keep getting clients. So I'm, I'm very fortunate that people call me and I'm like, Hey, you know, why didn't you call me in the first place? I guess it took you three turns, but you know, I really want to help people. That's my whole goal. And I think that they, they realize that. And I was like, you know, I told them up front, I'm going to be out of town this weekend, but you know, I've got somebody that's willing to help me. I need to check her schedule. Cause I don't know what that is. Otherwise, you know, we've got other agents that I can help show houses. Then the, then the USDA thing came and then I was like, okay, let me work on this. Let's figure this out. So, I mean, my win is that Annie is there working with these people, helping them because they've had bad experience with their, their past two realtors. So I feel like they, they got lucky on this one. Even, I mean, and um, they're not close relatives. Again, it's my, it's my cousin's um, son and his wife, but I mean, I know them, but they're not like my well, They knew about cousin, you, so. Carol. They knew about you because you must be doing something lead generating and reminding people. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So that, so that was definitely, I think, a win for both Annie and I. And, and I really hope, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I like to make more money, but I, honestly, I really feel like she's the one putting the work and the effort and everything into it. So if she's able to get them a house, I'm happy with that. And I'm happy with the referral fee. So um, challenges are, as always, I'm always time challenged because I'm, I'm spastic. I talk a lot. So I'm still working on um, minimizing my conversations with people. It's not uncommon for me to talk to a perfect stranger for two hours and it, it just happens. So I'm, I'm trying not to, to do that. And weekend plans, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take some pictures and some live video in Nashville. Um, we stayed in our room, our, or we've got this, uh, they're condos. We've got the whole hallway. There's um, five groups of, five sets of people here. And we've all got our individual rooms, but we have like a community kitchen and a patio. We sang a lot of karaoke last night. <laughs> Nobody got mad at us. So that's cool. It's kind of how Nashville is. But um, today we're planning to go into downtown Nashville. And um, I'm sure that my live videos will be be spectacular. I'm sure of that. So that's that's kind of where we are. I don't, did I miss anything else on there as far as the weekend plans? Or I smell no. breakfast right now. My cousin um, uh -huh. is the food corn king and he is literally down in the kitchen fixing up a feast down there and I can smell all this food I'm like oh my gosh I'm so hungry right now awesome. <laughs> look little breakfast will help with uh, making the day last okay yeah. next? win challenge plans for the weekend and what office you're with I can go next Miss Shelby I'm with Indy Metro South and then my win is that I talked to two people, which is more than I normally talk to about real estate yesterday. And one of them actually, um, a new coworker, she is looking to buy a house in Dayton, Ohio within the next year. So if anyone knows anyone in Dayton, Ohio that just rocks your socks off, then let me know. Here's what you want to do is you want to get on your on your command, there's a referrals applet down the side, right? So go on that referrals applet and you can search Dayton, Ohio, and then you can search all kinds of criteria. And, and you can just reach out to some agents and say, hey, I've got someone that might, you know, that's gonna be looking in the next year and I'd like to make the connection. With you. And then in your PC library, there is a folder called KW Referrals. 
then in there is a referral form. And all you do is you fill out the referral form and you send it to the agent. They sign it. They have their broker sign it. Then when that person buys the home, you get 25% referral fee of the commission. Awesome. Got that written down. Good stuff, I'm telling you. And then my challenge is I still have like limiting beliefs, but I'm working on it, obviously, because I've started talking to people, which is good. Okay, what's your number so, one limiting belief? That people are going to be like, don't talk to me about this. You're literally 18. <laughs> like, just stop talking about it. <laughs> okay, does anybody have any re any recommendations for Shelby? I do. Keep talking to them. Keep talking to them because the more you do it, the better you get at it. Um, and, and it's going to take that. I mean, it takes practice to get there. It really, really, really does. So just keep talking to them. And if you know what, don't let them get, don't let them discourage you. That's number one important because it's easy to get discouraged when they don't want to talk to you, but just go talk to somebody else and somebody's going to listen to you. Yes, Jessica. And it's not important that you know all the information. It's important that you know where to find the information. So if somebody asks you a question that you don't know, you say, you know what, that's a really good question. Let me get back to you on that. I will find out. Yes, that's absolutely. okay. You don't have to know everything. And then, you know, call Carla, call one of us. We'll figure it out for you. Absolutely. In your Ignite script book under elements, there are pages, I think they start on page like 10 or 11 and there are objection handlers and there are objection handlers for being a new agent and they apply to being 18 as well. Just saying. Okay. I'll look I think being 18 gives you like, because your ideology is different than mine as being a 50 year old and you know what I've experienced in the world. So you should bring bright, fresh new ideas to people. They should think of it that way as you being a younger agent. So, and kudos here's, to you for being 18 and getting your license. So. Absolutely. And here's my big one, right? Well, wow. You, you don't want to talk to me about real estate because I'm, I'm 18. Did, did anybody give you an, uh, you know, a, a benefit of the doubt when you were 18? Right. I mean, everybody was 18 once, right? Some of us can't remember it, but we were. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us. Besides, you got the name going for you too. So yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. everyone says that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you've got an automatic I'm conversation. I'm 18. I have my own brokerage. What's the problem? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, I'm Shelby Keller. I work with Keller Williams. <laughs> yeah, you've got an automatic conversation starter. Exactly. Love that. All right, who's next? I'll go. Um, so a win for me was um, I put Legion on my calendar this week and uh, just helped me stay focused a little bit more. Love um, that. My challenge was I would say I can't find, uh, figure out how to find like if certain HOAs, not um, homeowner associations, I can't find out if they take um, uh FHA loans or not, and I'm trying to figure out how to how to look them up and find it out. For uh, houses, for um for condos, uh, for just any HOA community, I'm trying to figure out like what type of loans they accept and which kinds they don't. Okay, well the the HOA community for a house typically, I mean I don't know of anyone they don't really dictate whether you can do FHA or not. Get right. The only the only the only thing that would be would matter is if it's some only some condos qualify for FHA not all types of condos qualify for FHA um, but uh, as far as houses go the HOA doesn't have anything to do with who the lender can be okay okay and um, I got a question for you um, Carla okay um, so I've been seeing a lot of um, buyers well sellers I don't do this on my listings, but I've been seeing a lot of sellers on their listings. They'll put um, highs and best within uh, three um, by Sunday. It's like they don't look at nobody's offer. Well, I don't know if they do or not, but they don't look at nobody's offer until that day. So it's like y'all giving a lot of people opportunity to put their offers in. Like, They're how do you um, suggest we get offer. over that? They're shopping for the best offer. I'll tell you what. Um, my, the way my practice was, is that I didn't call for highest and best until I had an offer, right? It seemed kind of, yeah, they do it before <laughs> it seemed misleading and it seemed in bad faith, right? 
So, but, right. but I, but I can't guarantee that other people, that other listing agents view it the same way that I do. And I have seen listings go live with that automatically in there. And part of that has to do with this market then we're, that we're in right now. But as soon as I had two off, if I had one offer, I didn't necessarily call for highest and best, or I might, depending on if I had a lot of showings scheduled, right? And some of the showings were going to be, you know, near the deadline of my offer. So that gave everybody that had scheduled a showing an opportunity, right? Um, so it, it's really, it's really a list, a listing agent call, but it's really not even a listing agent call. Who makes that decision technically or so. in reality? The seller, the seller, right? So how would Mr. Seller, we have an offer. Um, I think I have another one coming in. Would you like to just consider these two offers or would you like me to put out for a best and final by a specific date and time and let the seller decide? And I think, and it's really a broker question, but my interpretation and my thought regarding my fiduciary responsibility is that that's the seller's decision, not mine. Exactly. I, I kind of like it when I see um, that I'm showing clients houses and they, they, they like a particular house. And I see that, Hey, it's Wednesday and they're asking for highest and best by noon on Sunday. Cause that gives me some time to, to work on it as opposed to, Oh crap, I got to hurt and get an offer in for somebody Maybe. else does. And they go to highest and best. Maybe. And that's the thing you have to know is just because they say highest and best by Sunday does not mean they may not pull that. They, they may not wait. Yeah. Yeah. Long and long they may not wait. So a, a lot of them say too, that, you know, um, the seller reserves the right to accept an offer at any time prior to this. So yes, absolutely. Good. I had that happen when it said highest and best by Sunday night. And then Saturday morning, they accepted an offer. Yeah. So. But you know what? That, that I think is a benefit too, because here's the thing. If they got an overpriced cash offer, no appraisal, no inspection, accept it, right? No right. Agents go run around and write up all these offers and have all these buyers getting their hearts broken again. So, I mean, yep. if it's, if it's an unbeatable offer, it's an unbeatable offer, right? I mean, right. I call them. I, I'll reach out to the listing agent. I'm like, okay, look, I, I've got a client interested in your property or they're going to come see this property. Um, can you tell me, you know, do you have a, a, a cash offer? Do you have an offer where they're willing to pay above appraisal? Because if you do, I mean, I'm going to just take my client somewhere else to look because they can't do that. I know that they can't bring cash above appraisal. And many times I'll say, we you know we have good offers. We have cash offers. And they'll tell me we do not have anybody willing to pay above appraisal right now. So I'm like, okay, it's viable for us then. So, yeah. And you know what? The listing agent has to be careful because they can't yeah. give ethically, they can't give one buyer an advantage over another. So right. they can't right. tell you. I've had agents call me and ask me, what are your other offers? Seriously? Yeah. And they don't tell me what like, they are. I don't, I don't ask that. So, cause I know they, they're not so, going to tell yeah, me that. So, no, you, know, you can't do that. But, but, you know, you guys know that I, if I think that I had a buyer that was even remotely interested in offering on a property, like you guys have heard this, right? On a scale of one to 10, one being you wouldn't live in the house if you, uh, if it was given to you, 10 being we're making an offer right now, don't show me anything else and you can't choose seven, where are you? If they choose eight or above, I, I'm in the car on the way to the next house calling the listing agent and saying, hey, I just showed the house at 123 Main Street. No promises here, but this is a, this is a possibility for my for my my um my buyers so you know do you have any offers on the table right now and other than price which is you know the the king here what what do your sellers need to see to make a good offer right and mm -hmm. i have that conversation when i'm driving to the next house if i can then when i get to the next house i say you know what i just went ahead and called the listing agent because you you know you, you thought that one might be and i wouldn't want you to lose it right and be disappointed down the road and this is what i found out so that's where that communicate now in a multiple offer situation, the listing agent probably may not be able to talk to you, right? right Sometimes right. they have 30, 40 offers and 30 or 40 agents calling them and they kind of shut down and I don't blame them. Right? Yeah, yeah. So, it, It's crazy when you have multiple offers, it is absolutely nuts. Sometimes I'm like, wow. And it's hard to keep up with them. I mean, that's why you really need that admin that I'm, I'm really working on that now. Did, so. anybody, did anybody see the Inman article that came out this week about the kickout clause? And I don't think this is coming to our market yet, but it's an Inman, which means it might be something that we're going to see down the thing was where they accept your offer or they counter your accepting your offer with a kickout clause saying that if they get a better offer after the fact, they can drop you. 
And that, that, that is like, Ooh, that makes me crap. hurt. I mean, that that's is, crap. So we just have to be watching out for that. So just be really careful. If you see strange language, if you see strange language come back on a counter offer, don't get excited. Call the broker hotline, or if you're in Louisville, call your broker, right? Because that's going to be a broker question. Not everything that people are pulling out of the hat right now are actually appropriate. Yeah, I agree. I, uh, Richard Greenfield, he said that people were giving away vacations and such to sellers and offering There's bonuses. There's been lots of conversation like about that. That, tur that turns out to be a lender question, right? So if the lender's okay with it, that's, that's a mortgage fraud question, right? Yeah. So that's, that's a lender specific issue as to whether that's possibility. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't have clients that have that capability to offer vacations or, or money above, you know, appraisal or whatever. I feel so. like, you know, as the agent, I'll tell you what, if you're, if your seller accepts my offer, I'll send a pizza for moving day. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I think that's, you know, kind of on the up and up. Okay. Uh, Jessica, you had something to share on that. Well, I had a question. I'm seeing a little more often right now in this market that I'll like schedule a showing for a house and then I'll get a notification from the agent before we even get there that they're accepting an offer, but they're continuing to show. And then right on the heels of that, there'll be a notification that says they've adjusted the price and they're putting it up. Why price are we doing increase. that? What is the benefit of accepting an offer and then increasing the, the list price? Could be that kick out clause then. I don't know. I don't okay. know the answer to that because they're still trying to get more for it. I mean, it's well, like, but a, if they, it's had, a if they had an accepted offer, they shouldn't be doing anything other than marking it pending. Are they, right. are they doing it as maybe backup offers? Though? Well, I get the Possibly. continue to show they're looking for backup offers, but I don't understand the purpose of adjusting the price higher. I don't know. Jessica, I would recommend either an Ann Rubel or, um, or, or bring that up. I, I'll tell you where I would bring that up. Do you come to, do you, are you ever able to come to the Tuesday, 11 o'clock team Sometimes. meeting? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. You could come to that when they ask about lesson learns and broker questions, because that would be a really good question for everyone to learn from, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I honestly, I have no idea what the answer is, but I can tell you, or um, if you see it again, call the broker hotline and let them hop on and take a look at it, right? Because it might be something that needs to be reported. We have to remember that my board is a membership, right? And so we, and same with GLAR and same with your, your board in Columbus. So we have to, we have to police things, right? Mm -hmm. If you ever go through a listing and you see a listing and it's really wrong, right? You know, it's really, really wrong. Or the agent's sign is in the picture. It's a violation of my board, right? Um, just there's a little report button, right? Just report it because they can't, they, there's no way they can monitor all of these things. So yeah, Jessica, I don't know. Has anybody else seen that? I have not. I wonder if you can call, just call the listing agent and say, hey, I just saw this happen. How does that work? And I would just ask them what they're doing. That, like, that is, that is one option. Yeah, I've seen it two or three times now. So that's why I'm kind of asking. Like, what's this new thing going? Everybody's trying... Everybody is really trying um, all different avenues to right. get the most for the property. And, and, and the same with buyers too. I mean, it's so difficult with buyers to get those offers accepted. I'm like, I'm, my, my main goal when I go look at a house, I'm pulling all the comps. I'm going to find as many comps as I can to see how strong of an offer, you know, up to what they're approved to, to put an offer in on properties. Right. Yeah. Well, hey, Carl, I mean, what did you mean about the sign in the picture? Oh, if you can't take a picture with your sign in the yard and put it on the multiple listing service. Right, but you can put that on Facebook. You can put it on Facebook, yes. It, just okay. can't, it can't be in the MLS. Got it. I got I got dinged for that early on. I had a lot, okay? I This is how I learned that lesson. You learn lessons, what, the hard way sometimes. Um, I had a lot and I was so excited and I got my sign out there. Well, how do you take a picture of a lot? Right. So I took a picture of the, it was the corner, right. With the street sign that had the two, cause it was a corner lot. And so I had a picture of the street sign and about half of my sign was in the, in the picture. Cause I had already put my sign in the yard and I got dinged. Uh -oh. See, I didn't know that. I did not know that. 
you see that's the best that's the best way to learn lessons right is from somebody else's mistake not from your exactly own. no i won't forget that though I'll go, oh yeah i can't do that <laughs> awesome okie dokie who's next win challenge what office you're in and what you're doing this weekend i'll go uh challenge of course is still a schedule um I've, I've come to terms that I'm a dual agent, although I wanted real estate to be my priority. Uh, well, my first job or whatever. Um, so it's just a matter of scheduling, which um, leads me into what I'm doing this weekend. It's making up some numbers from the week. Um, and I'm with the Keller Williams Metro East office. And then my win, although very small, I'm going to consider it a win. but um, when I send out my business cards, um, when I do the Legion and send out my business cards, I've been like going to the dollar store and getting little cards like this and making them handwritten. Hey, if you're ever, you know, if you need a realtor, please give me a call or whatever and send in my card. So um, I did a follow up call this week with someone that I had called earlier during the month and asked them, you know, hey, I'm, I'm following up. You said you were maybe considering putting your home on the market, where is that at or whatever. And she had decided um, that she was just gonna stay in her home for a while. But she said, I did get your card. It said, hello on the front and it was handwritten and it had your, your card in it or whatever. Um, so I consider that a win because it's making people remember who I am because it's a handwritten card and it's not the, the regular marketing. Um, I love that. And I consider it a win because you made a phone call and you followed up and you had a conversation. Now mm -hmm. she remembers you and you've checked on her. So now you just need to, I got, I got one for you. Did you guys all see my um, email to you guys on Monday around one o'clock? And I've probably mentioned it to a few of you about what Keller Mortgage is doing right now. Did everybody see that? Anybody have any questions on it or did anybody not see it? I don't know. I don't remember seeing it. Okay, we'll go back and take a look at that. Keller Mortgage is basically rolling back the interest rate to about January interest rates for refinancing. So Carol, since she's decided she'd like to stay in her home, another follow-up would be, hey, I just found out that Keller Mortgage is offering this refinance special. They're rolling back the interest rate a quarter of a percent that takes you about back to January. Since you're gonna stay in your home, I have, would you like to some information about refinancing? There's no lender fees, right? So that saves 1%. And if the home, if the loan is over $150,000, then they get $1,000 back at credit, which pays for their appraisal and the other expenses. So it's basically a free repayment. I actually did see that one and I can because she she did, she said she was going to consider, she, she wanted to just stay in her home, but she asked me if I could do the, um, let her know what her, the value was. So I did agree to do a CMA for her. Um, and then I was telling Cheryl, another person that I followed up with, I knew she wasn't interested in selling her home right now. But when I had called her the first time, she said she wasn't feeling well because she had gotten her second COVID shot. So I just put it in to follow up the week after to see how she was feeling. <laughs> and when I did that, she was like, oh, that's so nice of you. Blah, 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 blah. No, real estate, no real estate sales pitch or anything. Just how are you feeling yeah. after your COVID shot? So Absolutely. Okay, so back to the refinance real quick, and then we'll move on. And I'm sorry to interrupt you, Carol, but I want to finish that, that line of thought. So here's the thing. If they don't want to sell, they don't want to sell. I don't want to sell my house either. But if you were to give me a free refinance and I saved a whole bunch of money and I hear somebody say, hey, do you know a real estate agent? Who am I going to think of? Right? There's lots of perks here. Plus, if you offer that refinance to people, it gives you a reason to call people. First and foremost, it, it gives you a reason to call people. You don't have to feel like, well, why am I calling people? I'm just calling to bother them. No, I'm, I'm, I'm calling to give them a gift, right? To give them a gift. But what if you say, did you refinance in the last six months? And they say, no, because we're thinking maybe we're going to sell later this year, or early next year. Glad I asked the question, right? Okay. All right. So Carol, you're working for the weekend. You're in the Northeast office. I got your win and your challenge. I think we're, we're good. You got anything fun planned for Carol this weekend though? Not so much as fun, but um, I've been teetering around with, with flowers and stuff like that because I do not have a green thumb. So we're, <laughs> we're going to be out in the yard a little later. Love that. This is a good weekend for out in the yard. 
Okay, who's next? Win challenge office weekend. Carl, I can go. Go, Miss Shelley. Okay, so happy Derby Day, everybody. It's the Kentucky Derby. And Yay. I am in, uh, yes, I'm in Keller Williams, Louisville East, and I'm in Louisville, obviously. Um, a win, let's see. I have to think about that. I'm still having some challenges. Um, I still have a couple, six properties under contract right now. Uh, two of them are really struggling. One is still struggling with that pop-up lien from two sellers ago. We're no farther ahead on that. And then the other one struggled. We were supposed to close Thursday and it turned into a short sale um, on the fly. So that's a 45 to 60 day time frame from now. So uh, just moving forward very slowly on that one. Um, so struggling with both of those a little bit and trying to keep hold of the buyers. Um, a win is I'm showing property all weekend to different buyers. Um, and two of them are newer buyers and both of them are referrals. So um, I'm super pleased about that. I just showed a house uh, in Shepherdsville, which is just south of Louisville. And um, it was a total gut job. I was really considering doing a Facebook Live, but it's so bad. It was so bad in there that I didn't do it. Um, so total gut job on that house. And, uh, Facebook Live, you could get investors from that, right? Look at this great property that's just waiting for you to come make it your own. Yeah. But I didn't know because the listing agent's actually in my office. She's not on my team, but she's in my office. And um, I shot her a note or tried to call her, couldn't get a hold of her. I didn't know if it was okay for me to show that because she didn't mention it anywhere in the listing and there weren't any pictures. Oh, oh, I so see. So just thought, well, we'll yeah. just go to skip yeah, it. Yeah, that's probably a good good call, Shelly. So, yeah, so that was my win, my challenge. What's going on? So showing lots of property, and I'm on my way back home to meet my friend Michelle, and we are going to strip the hideous wallpaper out of my kitchen and hallway so I can get ready to, re to repaint. Well, exciting. We'll be excited. Yes. To we'll be excited to see that on Zoom. Yes, and Facebook it. Live, Home right. Improvement Facebook Live. I love it. Yeah, you'll see it. So happy Derby, everybody! Happy Derby Day, happy Derby Shelly. Oh. That's, that's anybody else have that on your bucket list? I have a bucket list. I want to go to the Derby, but I want to go set in a box with a hat. <laughs> yeah, I'm not you drinking have a hat. Anything. I am you not drinking the mint julep because I tasted that once, and that does not taste like it sounds. So mint juleps are gross. You definitely <laughs> want to sit in a box. Make sure your hat is no wider than your shoulders or people will be knocking it off your head. And um, yes, don't buy the cheap tickets and go to the infield unless you're 20 and plan to be drunk for six hours. So I don't recommend that. So Very similar to the Indy 500. Do we just don't get that kind of hats? We have to wear other hats so we don't boil to death. Oh, yes, I bet. Yeah, now definitely, definitely a bucket list for me. So anybody else? Anybody else? Have, have you been to the Derby? Anybody want to go to the Derby? I have a friend that goes every year and his wife gets a new hat every year. She gets some really cool hats. Really cool. I, I could I could be that. I think I'd love that. Shall I'm a ball cap person and that's about it. So she will be coming to the Derby with me. Yes. I'll I go like with you, Carla. Okay. Be so All right. fun. We're going to plan this in the future. All right. Okay. Next, we got 15 minutes before Eugene is here. I'm really excited about hearing what Eugene has to share, but I need to hop off of here. Cause I hear that I can't stand the smell of this. I can stand the smell. It's so good. I'm like, I've got to go down there and see what they've got going you on. Go enjoy there. yourself. You just are such a trooper on your vacation and your, on your well, share. I don't want to, I don't want to miss out on anything. It's just, I will right. send a video. So you will absolutely get the credit repair info. Awesome. Awesome. And I, and I need to know about that for people too. So cool. Hey, you guys all have a great weekend. I'll see you all Monday. Bye dear. Bye. I want to figure out how to leave the meeting first. Okay. There we go. I got it. All right. Who's next? Win challenge office weekend. I'll go, I'll go. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. So, uh, I'm out of the ending, uh, South office. My win was, uh, doing my door knocking, getting a little bit more successful at that getting over that, that hump, that fear. Um, 
uh, my challenge is procrastinating on my facility my owner. You know, I, I took too long trying to gear up for that and trying to prepare, you know, get the comps, make sure I'm going to say the right thing and not be nervous, all that stuff. And even though I still called him, the sign was gone when I went back to, just to make sure. Well, when I went back to uh, actually approach the whole facility owner, you know, a fake song. Uh, so I didn't end up calling anyway, and um, you know I just left a message, so they they haven't called me back. But I wanted to show you what my my biggest challenge was is you can't see me. This is what I'm doing this weekend. He's a baseball. To, trying to figure out how to get the oh. field, <laughs> the field for being so muddy, so we can play here in about an hour. Oh, the so boys, they'll love playing in the mud, right? Isn't that the fun? Uh, well, I don't think the parents would, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's my, my so we see what Jay's doing for the weekend. What about, mm -hmm. see, sometimes we get ready to get ready to get ready to get ready, right? And by the time we've got ready to get ready to get ready to get ready, it's too late. Yeah. Sometimes we just have to jump in. Yeah. Uh, analysis, paralysis, all those kinds of things. That's, that that caused me to wait too long and maybe miss out on, on a deal. So, like you said, a lesson from that was when you see it, just go ahead and go for it. Just, you know, sometimes it ain't all about what you got on at the point in time. Just go ahead and do it and seize the moment. So that's that's my new my new thing. Season. I moment. love it. And see, I said moment. this earlier. Some of the some of the lessons that we learn in life, we learn the hard way, right? And sometimes we learn from other people. So Jay learned this lesson the hard way for all of you guys. So, thank you, Jay. <laughs> so, see y'all later. Uh, see y'all later. I, I catch the um, recording later, but I got to do this. Yeah, it looks like you have a, a problem. Yep. <laughs> so, see everybody later. Bye -bye, have a great Jay. Saturday. <laughs> Love that. Right? So, we get ready to get ready to get ready to get ready. Anybody, ever else, everybody, anybody else ever done that? It's a special kind of procrastination because we tell ourselves that we're procrastinating for a reason. Like it's an important reason why we're procrastinating, right? I love that. All right, who else? Win, challenge, what office you're with and what you're doing for the weekend. I can go. Yes, ma'am. Um, my, I mean, I, I guess my, I don't have a huge win for this week, but my win is, uh, I mean, I'm continuing to go on appointments and to show houses um yeah i even showed a commercial lot for a lease which i'd never done so unfortunately it was like crazy ridiculously high and my client couldn't afford it but at least i got a lot of learning <laughs> out of that process um my challenge is just i mean i'm sure it's everybody's challenge but the like just properties and making my offers you know like if i even get to see a property um like the offer is just so competitive. So um, just working through that, that's just a continuing challenge right now. Even I have a client from, well, he's, he lives in Puerto Rico right now and uh, he needs to buy a house in Ohio before hurricane season, but he has specifics, very, very specifics about what he wants. So I have a setup on a, uh, on a, a search, for the specifics of his property. And it, we literally get zero emails <laughs> from that search. So I'm like, we have to like narrow this in a way, you know, like it has to have a little flexibility. So that's a big challenge right now. Um, but he, you know, he's a great buyer. So I'd, <laughs> I wouldn't keep him around, but that's just- Ooh, that's And sometimes we have buyers, right? That are looking for unicorns or <laughs> are looking for um, things that just don't come up a bit, cup come up very often right yeah, yeah. Um, and, and i have i have someone that um i worked with for about eight months and they wanted a condo in this specific community and it had to be in this specific community and those properties don't come up very often and when they do they're gone like this they were cash buyers they weren't going to get an appraisal they were awesome buyers we were still and this was a year ago before this crazy market you know that we're in right now and they because it was a crazy market for that they weren't the only ones that wanted in this community <laughs> what i ended up doing i'm just going to share because it was a, it was it, it worked out brilliantly is that i watched and there was a property that was pending 
um, that we didn't even get a chance. It like listed and pended all at the same time. And so we didn't even get a chance to go see it. Uh, and it was pending and I saw that the closing date had passed and it hadn't changed from pending. So I called the listing agent and I said, uh, so I saw that this was supposed to close last Friday. It's now Wednesday and it's still showing pending. Did it not close? And she said, oh no, this is the most frustrating thing. And she just started, you know, you know how we all vent, you get that excited. She just vented a little bit and probably told me more than she should have, because I said, I have a cash buyer, no appraisal. We'll, we can close on like when, as soon as you want, as soon as the title company can have it ready, we can close. And she said, okay, we're releasing the other, we're going to release the other buyer then. And that's how my clients have their condo. Well, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> Sometimes just because it says pending, look when the closing date is. If the closing date's in the past and it still shows pending, that might tell you there's an opening there. And if you have that kind of situation where you can swoop in and save the day, like not another 45 days or something like that, it might be enough that would get you. Just That's an example of what we have to do right now, which is just kind of stretch out of the box. Yes, well, where do you see the closing date? Where is that information? So... Um, at the very in the, I, I, Gretchen, I am so at a disadvantage with you because I have never seen your multiple listing service. Oh, but okay. if you look at the sheet, okay, at mm -hmm. the very bottom, it'll show on the on the agent view. It should show the um, the estimated close date. I'm gonna pull up the indie one because it's the only listing service that I have access to, and show okay. you where it is on here, and maybe that will help you um, see where it is on your end. Okay. So let me log in. Wow. Somebody else go ahead and well, finish sharing your weekend. Oh, um, yes. Weekend. I will just be outside planting things. My happy place. So <laughs> my happy place too. Although I'm hoping it'll be warmer. I feel like every time I go outside, it's like rain, cold wind. So Sunday, it's supposed to be beautiful. So I'm not coming inside all day probably. Okay, I got, I'm going to share screen real quick. Okay. So this is not going to look like yours in Louisville or Columbus, but it should, I mean, we all have the same information. So it should show up somewhere similar. So I just pulled up the, the pendings. And if I go down to the bottom, you see here where it says estimated close. Okay. Yeah, I don't think ours offers that information, but I'll check. Um, somewhere it will look under the contract information. There should be the list date, the date it got entered into the multiple listing service, the last time it got changed, the date it pended, and the okay. close date should all be there. It's the same place where you go if you look for um, solds. So if I went to a sold, I would go down here and it would show me the date that it closed. Okay. Yeah, just I know that there's one that we had put an offer in on that we're still watching because we, we just don't know how our terms were like beat. So we're right. just kind of wanting to see like, well, what is it that they really wanted, you know? So. Yeah. But, and the other thing that we have to do is we have to remember that we're asking our buyers this question. They say they want to offer 200 for the house. Okay. We're going to write the offer up at 200. Now let me ask you a question. If it sells for 205 and you miss out, are you going to be upset, right? We have to help them find their upper limit. We have to help them find the number where they're not gonna be in pain if they lose. Um, and, and, you know, the biggest challenge right now is does anybody have a buyer that's looking for a bargain? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bargain, bargain buyers right now really are I, the two things that I would find to be most challenging right now would be bargain shoppers and cash buyers. Because well, buyers... some of my, yeah, yeah, some of my investors have been spoiled because they've gotten great properties and great deals in years past. So yeah, that's. Yeah. And then see, and what the pain that we're in right now and the little bit of overprice that we're paying is because the interest rates are so low. That's the offsetting. But if you're a cash buyer, there's no offset, right? So that's challenging. Although if you do have somebody that has cash, one thing that I would recommend would be a cash buy and then a, and then, and then a finance after the fact so that they could get their cash back and get take advantage of the low interest rate because it's so low right, right now. 
So that would be something else that you could suggest to somebody as a possibility. Okay, let's see, who hasn't gone yet? Jenna, 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 did you, I saw emails and tech, an email and a text from you yesterday. Did you make an offer? I'm still trying to work on it right now. Awesome. Um, he's, my buyer is very impatient. <laughs> um, and he's uh, not very happy right now just because I'm trying to um, figure out everything with the offer. Um, there's still a few slots in there that I'm um, not too sure how to um, put in. Um, and then, uh, who else is there? Um, I'm about to send him um, another DocuSign for um, a few other documents. Um, and then I have to meet with my other buyer this evening um, to show him a property that he already knows that he's going to put an offer in at uh, $550,000. So oh, then I have to, yeah, then I have to get up all the documents for that one. So that's exciting. Okay. Yes. Well, here, what real quick, let's see if we can't help you get this purchase agreement together. And this would be good for everybody. So let's do this real okay. quick before Jean, Eugene gets here. Can you, if I share this, can you share, share your screen and show us which lines you're having an issue with? Yes. Okay. This is exciting. Okay, while you're doing, while you're screen, do you see how to do that at the bottom? There should be a little green box that says screen share oh, and you yep. pick the screen. Um, you, the question you asked me yesterday, yesterday I spent all day after I taught Ignite, I spent all day painting, uh, well, no, uh, kill, putting kills on the walls in the building that we bought and my phone died. So if you guys text oh. me, I tried to get back to you this morning, but I forgot to take a charger with me for my day off. Um, all right. Okay. Can you see my screen? screen? We just have a black screen. Oh. It is a document. I think it's, oh, no, that's me. <laughs> How do I? Well, you may have to stop, share, and reshare. So you have to pick the screen okay. that you want us to see. Okay. Um, if that doesn't work, I'll pull up a purchase agreement because we can't have you, we can't have an unhappy buyer or have you panicked. So we're going to. Okay. <laughs> Uh, pause, share. See if I can screen, share screen. Share. Well, that's me. Now we is it doing it now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna. Do you guys up. see? Okay. <laughs> okay. I I am gonna pull up um I'm gonna pull up a sample and you can just tell me what lines you're working on. How about that? Okay. So for those of you in Indiana, there's a folder. Uh and I'm working on a folder like this for you guys in Louisville and in uh in Columbus, but I don't have it just yet. But in, in, in India, and I still owe you guys a listing agreement in Indiana. I'm, it's slow going. I'm working on it. But in your Indiana folder, uh, there are, under a folder called videos on preparing Indiana forms, there is a purchase agreement folder. And in there is a video where I walk you through the entire uh, purchase agreement. And then there's also a sample purchase agreement. I am going to let Eugene in real quick and then uh, and then I'm going to let him know. Good morning, Eugene. Uh, good, good, good morning. Good morning. Can you give us just a couple of minutes? I'm finishing something up and then I'll give the floor over to you. Okay, you're fine. Awesome. All right. All right, Jenna, here we go. Let's go back over here. What lines on the purchase agreement are you having a hard time with? Okay, let me get this pulled up. Still learning how to maneuver through DocuSign as well. <laughs> who, who else can sympathize with that? <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. All right. Let me go down here to line. I'd also taken a picture of which lines I was going on to. So that'll help me out. Um, 236. Okay, let's get down here. Line, 
All right, my my form and your form is going to be a little bit different because this okay. is the older version. So tell me what's two thirty six. Is it the limited home warranty? Yeah, limited home warranty program. Okay, do they want a home warranty? Um, I was kind of scared to ask him. <laughs> well, every question here, that I've asked. On, is, are you competing? Is there anybody else that's making an offer on this property? Yes. Okay, I would not recommend a home warranty then. If he wants a home warranty, he can add it after the fact and pay for it himself, but asking the seller to pay for it, he's not going to be able to win. Okay, so I'll click will not. Will not, yes. Okay. What's your next one? And then the next one is uh, the title approval. Title approval, it should be the title commitment for the most current and comprehensive Alta title insurance policy available. Okay. Gretchen, do they still do abstracts in, in Columbus? I was going to say ours look completely different. Oh, I know your form looks completely oh. different. But your title, you, do you do, they don't do, do they still do, I'm just asking, do they still do abstracts of title or do you do title policies now in Ohio? I honestly don't know. Does the attorney do your title or is the title company? I don't know because I've not had to do that yet. Okay, <laughs> so. well, we're going to figure that out. <laughs> we'll figure that out together. Yeah, that would be nice to know. Yeah. All right, Jenna, what's next? And then is the owner's title insurance premium, is that shared equally or was there? The, again, oh. this is about how competitive you want your offer to be. I recommend that in a competitive offer, honestly, to be the most competitive, I recommend that the buyer pay for all of it. But if the buyer doesn't okay. want to pay for all of it, then the normal is that the seller pays for the owner policy, the buyer pays for the lender policy, and that they um, share the closing costs. But, but okay. in a competitive environment, if you want to win in a multiple offer situation, I recommend the buyer pays everything. Okay. Well, he is being, um, uh, he definitely is a businessman and he tr is trying to get a bargain. And I've told him that if whenever we're in a multi multiple offer situation that um, there aren't any he's going to at least have to pay um, the asking price. He's going to um, have to pay over asking price probably. Right. Yeah, that's I had explained that to him as well. Um, he said that he won't pay over the asking price. He'll pay the asking price um, or he'll just kill the deal. OK, so well, the asking price <laughs> and then then, you know, I would recommend to him that he pay the, the title policy, the title cost. And if he doesn't want to, then that's his choice, Jenna. So okay, as long as he understands that, you know, he could lose this property over a couple of hundred dollars. Right. OK, awesome. OK, what's the next line? Um, party crease. Okay. The, okay, I already got the taxes. Next is. The taxes should be number two, right? Yeah, yeah, I got that one. Okay. Um, uh, number 354. Is that 352 oh, on mine? Uh, it's the conveyance of this property shall be general, shall is, be by general. Is this, is this a state, an estate? Who's selling it? Just a person? Uh, yes, it's actually the listing agent who's the owner. Okay, just put NA on line 50, on line, in that box. Um, next is... Okay, and I had one question um, about the um, closing date. Let me find that where that's on here. And then that was it. So um, on 91, um, so it says that the closing of the sale, the closing date shall be on or before so and so. Um, so he is contingent upon um, his property in Miami. Um, which closes on June 14th. Okay. So how would I put that on here um, as well, far as like shall be on or before? So so I would say on or before June 15th, right? Okay. On, on June 15th, is he getting a loan? Yeah. He's getting a loan. Okay. So you need no, to- No, he's paying cash. 
He's paying cash. Okay. So here, on or before June 15th or within one day of closing of, of the property online, whatever the line is where it says contingency, this agreement is contingent on the closing of the pending transaction on the buyer's property yep. located at. So I would just say, yeah, I would put 615 or one day after uh, closing of property on line, whatever line that number is on your thing, if it's line 98 on yours line or whatever it is. Okay. Alrighty, and I think that's it. Am I able to send this your way for you to look yeah, over it whenever it's convenient? Just, just email it to me, dear. And while you, if you get it finished and you email it to me, I'll open my email and I'll watch for it. And while Eugene is talking, I will take a minute and I'll look at it over. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, guys. Well, Eugene, are you here? I know I lost you for a minute and you came back. Yeah, I'm here. Awesome. Okay. Well, the floor is yours, guys. This is Eugene. He's going to tell you all about him. And I am so excited what he's going to share. This is going to be a great tool in your toolbox. Absolutely. Well, I'm super excited and honored to be here. Um, and I'm going to be super, super brief. I know I think you guys started training. Was it at 9 a.m.? Was it at we 9 a.m.? We started at 9 with group coaching and you have, we're here until 11. So you take as much okay. time as you can. Okay, 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 okay. All right. Well, yeah, you know, I want to be brief. Obviously, you guys have been here uh, since 9 o'clock. Um, but definitely excited. And I work with a lot of different, you know, um, real estate professionals and uh, mortgage brokers and things like that. So just the fact that I mean, you guys have a, a brokerage that's willing to train you guys, because again, I hear a lot of times that some people are with a brokerage and they're not getting the training, right? That's needed because that's key, right? Because you can have the title, but if you have the training become successful, it makes it really difficult to become, you know, become really good at what you do. Um, so definitely want to give it back to Carla. Thank you again for inviting me. I'm going to give you guys some information. I mean, you guys got a phenomenal coach. I was hearing her speak just now. I um, heard some great things about her from Vendrick. Um, so again, man, you guys are in great hands because again, it, everything starts with training, especially with what I do in my industry. We do a lot of training as well. And we always tell people a well-trained agent is going to be a well-paid agent. That's the facts. So let me go ahead and get into what we do. My name is Eugene. I'm actually one of the executives with our company um, where we help people with their credit. And I got involved with our company about four years ago. Prior to that, just some background story. You know, I was in trans transactional business, right? Um, I actually owned a car dealership here in Tampa, Florida. I live here. Um, and I'm going to go over some things with you guys and write down any questions that you have and I answer at the end. Um, but being in that business, I've seen a lot of people with credit issues. The upside for us is in a car business, we can still get people financing, right? It, it's, it's not going to be that difficult. The downside is that person's going to get hit with a high interest rate. We call that subprime rate. Right in Florida, legally, an interest rate could go all the way up to 28 <laughs> percent on a vehicle. So just imagine. Unfortunately, if you got a 500 credit score, the bank's not going to give you a good interest rate. Like, hey, look, they want to try to collect most of the money up front because they may think that you're going to default. So um, I had a lot of clients that had to take subprime interest rate because they had less than perfect credit. So when I heard of this company that we could actually help people with their credit, um, get them the results that's needed, I was really attracted to it. Um, then also, it doesn't involve me to do a lot of hands-on, and the company was already credible. So I said, look, uh, let me get on board. I got my some of my clients on board. I got my wife actually on the services, who's actually in the process looking to purchase a second home at the time. Um, within 90 days for her, we got her credit improved and was able to qualify. Uh, we got my mother-in-law on the program. And I want to say for her, within about 90 days, she went from like a 500 to a 700. So we, you know, we was excited knowing that this works. And just imagine, I mean, Everyone need help with credit. I mean, it's, the statistics shows it's about 80% of the U.S. population that have less than perfect credit. So, uh, you know, got on board and from there, it's helped a lot of clients, right, to get their credit in position. Because, you know, one thing I always thought about is like, how can I get repeat business? How can I get repeat clients or other referrals? And it's through treating one client as a million dollar client. So if I get that client, not just to sell them a vehicle, right? Think about this. If I get them a better interest rate, right, they get to save more money in their pocket. And then now in the future, they could qualify to buy a house. So what's going to happen when someone's seen with a, a new vehicle, a great interest rate, they're going to tell their friends and family about me. And that's what I thought about. And that's what happened. So I got repeat clients because now I say, look, I was a go here and purchase vehicle, but not just that. This person, you know, really had my best interest at heart. And he was able to give me a, a great interest rate on the vehicle. Right. So from there, you know, things picked up and we transitioned to why focus on this full time. 
Um, and you know, they've helped a lot of clients, you know, with their credit. And now my wife is also a real estate agent here in Florida, uh, because a lot of our clients, when we ask them, why are you looking to restore your credit? Right. When you reach out to us, 90% of the responses is I'm looking to purchase a home. Right. And I told, I said, man, one of us got to get our license. You know, once I graduated college, I made a, a vow that I'm not going back to study for no tests. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, so my wife ended up, you know, getting a license. She likes it. You know, she likes, you know, like doing that. She used to work in the mission at the university and kind of likes, you know, being a real estate agent. So but the reason I'm saying that is because most people that need help with their credit looking to acquire a home. So I want to ask you guys a question. I mean, how many of you guys, you guys can unmute and answer this or you guys can type this in the chat. How many guys come across individuals that want to purchase a home? They may qualify with the income, but they may have some credit challenges. You guys ever come across that issue before? I just have that happen. Yeah. Okay. 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 And what, what remedies do you provide for that situation? Like, or do you advise the client? Like, what do you guys do? I just asked the lender to provide him some information on improving his credit. Okay, okay. And do they ever turn out where they, the credit get improved and things like that or no? Um, I'm not sure because it just happened recently. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. okay, okay. So, you know, obviously we help people credit, but what happens is typically, you know, because again, we work a lot of different real estate professionals, different brokerages. And what happens is they'll tell that client, hey, look, well, you need to come back, get your credit restored, or they'll see if the lender could provide them assistance. Now, two things will happen. That client, prospect or client will either not purchase a home no more or they're going to find somebody else that can provide them a solution because i'll put myself in the client's shoes if i go somewhere to maybe you know try to go get my car fixed more for example and that individual can't fix my car i'm not going to wait on them what i'm going to do i'm going to find somebody else that can fix my car yes or no so that's what happens when these clients have credit issues like hey look i can't help you they're going to go to somebody else that can actually provide them that solution and this is where we can kind of help we help a lot of our real estate agents um, increase their bottom line and make more money. We even have some partners. They, they're able to make seven figures now in real estate because of our solution that we provide for them. And that's what I want you guys to think about that we want to be focused on providing a solution, you know, and obviously you want to refer, refer them, you know, to a mortgage broker if they provide assistance. But sometimes what I realize is that, that loan officer or mortgage broker is really busy with a lot of other clients because, you know, obviously, you know, the business, they're really busy. It takes a lot to do a deal and they may not have time to educate that client up uh, uh, client by their credit, right? They may not be able to be able to remove the derogatory items. They may be giving them some advice, but that's all sometimes they can do because they already have their hands full trying to get these loans processed. So what we do, we allevi alleviate that stress off the burden off of you and then office the loan officer as well too. So the company that allows that is called United Credit Education Services. And this company has been around for 17 years. You know, we're licensed in all the states. Um, we already helped over a million clients get, you know, great credit. And that's what attracted me to because before I came across this company, when I was looking to get my wife credit fixed, I paid someone actually $500 to get the, you know, her credit worked on and we didn't get no results. And, you know, I didn't want it to stop there. So when I seen this platform that, you know, we get to see everything that's going on, we get to track the progress. It is feeling more credible and more safe. And I always think about how my clients will feel. And that's why I kind of got on board with the platform and see what it was able to do. So company has been around for a long period of time. And the reason why they kind of got started is because it, it, it's based, our corporate is based out of Farmington Hills, Michigan, but it was a group of individuals and professionals that always had issues when it came with qualifying um, with that client credit. So this is where the company came about to provide that solution in Michigan and it grew and now, now it's a nationwide company. So now I want to kind of go some statistics in 2019, right? Um, obviously this part has changed. But, you know, what we're looking at is trying to figure out why home purchase applications were denied, right? Studies show, and I'm going to go over the main two reasons. I'm not going to go over all of this, but obviously you guys know, you guys are in the industry. But the two main reasons a client may not qualify, first, first thing is you guys can see here is debt to income ratio. You may have someone that have great credit. You may have someone that also got great income, but they got high debt, right? Have you guys ever came across that issue? That's very important. Right, that's why you guys always hear if someone's going through a home buying process. Hey, look, do not rack up a new loan. Do not go out there and purchase a vehicle during a home buying process. Yes or no? All right. Also, because you're racking up new debt, it could impact your debt to income ratio. Same thing. Some people like, you know what? I'm about to close on this house. Let me go buy some new furniture. Let me go to Ashley Furniture, the rooms to go, and let me, you know, get a proof of financing on this on this furniture, zero percent interest rate for two years. But that that could show up on your credit. So the debt to income ratio could be a factor as well. 
And then also the credit history, which is very important, obviously, right? The credit history, um, the credit history is something as well that is a major factor why people don't qualify. And this is why I'm here today. And we provided a solution to both of these. And I'm gonna go ahead and explain how, right? So now we wanna make sure that we're, we're providing a solution to these issues here. So that way more people can get approved for housing, more people get approved for qualifying for a home. So now I'm gonna kind of go over to the services, what we offer. Like I said, we've been around for 17 years, 2004, headquartered in Farmington Hills, Michigan. We have services that help the client get the credit in position. We're a debt-free company. Um, and we got the professional that be able to assist the client. And obviously you guys are educated about credit um, and versed about credit and things like that. So obviously you guys can provide tips and advice to your client. But what happens if you have someone that have derogatory items, collections, medical bills, things like that, um, that may be impacting the score. And we can actually get these negative items removed off that client credit report legally. Obviously you guys heard of the Fair Credit Reporting Act, right? That's one of the laws that we leverage. But now let's go over the service that we offer. And we don't just do credit because you guys may hear maybe your colleagues or friends or maybe even online, you see people that do credit restoration. They only offer credit, right? We don't just do credit. We're a financial literacy company. So we give clients 12 services included. And this is, per, and I love this platform because so many services here, I didn't have myself. And what we help, we know most people want to make a purchase with their credit. So we help them with budgeting their money. So now they can also save towards maybe a down payment because it's part of expenses occurred when they're trying to purchase a home, right? Expression costs, appraisal costs, right? So we're helping them save as well. So that way they can qualify to make that purchase that they want to. So we know the main reason why people may have, you know, credit challenges, maybe some bills were left unpaid. Maybe they didn't budget properly, right? We all can agree. A lot of times people make great income. Prime example, I had a gentleman who made over $100,000 a year faithfully, but he was always renting an apartment. Not because he couldn't afford to buy a house. It was because he had a 500 credit score. And his wife was fed up and said, hey, look, man, we make great income. We have a son, we have a family, let's get a bigger place. And that's when she got in touch with us and we got him on a program within 90 days, he went to a 700, right? And within six months, he was able to close in his house. And I didn't know the back end story where he was getting his credit restored until he reached out to me and said, hey, Gene, like, you know, let me take you out to lunch. I'm like, what's going on? Like, what did I do that was special? I'm not gonna turn down a free meal, right? And um, he said, I just wanna show you my appreciation and token, like your company changed my life. like." He's like, look, man, I, I make great money, but I didn't know how to manage my credit. And you guys were able to help me qualify for a house. And, you know, that right there showed me that a lot of people are in the same situation. I may have the income, but the credit may be a challenge for them. So now we're able to help with budgeting so they can manage their finance property. With the credit restoration, we leverage the Fair Credit Reporting Act, and we're able to legally dispute any derogatory items off their report. Typically, clients receive results in 45 to 90 days. Obviously, we know credit restoration is not an overnight process. You know, someone can't come with a 500 credit score and expect to have a 700 in two weeks. That's not going to work, right? It's, it's impossible. Um, but yeah, 45 to 90 days clients see results. Recommend stay on a program for to six months for the full experience. But I have some clients seem get results in 30 days, right? But we like to give clients worst case scenario, 45 to 90 days to get results, which is still a quick turnaround time. But some clients, 30 days, they see a significant increase in their credit score. Um, credit bill, we're going to educate that client about credit, about how to maintain their credit score as well, too. Credit attorney. This will set some, separates us apart from any other company you heard of. We partner with credit attorneys as well, too, because sometimes you have clients, they have some items that don't belong to them. I have a client I'm working with now, she has some items on her report that's not hers, right? And by law, the, the credit bureaus have to remove this off the report. If they do not, the credit attorneys can actually sue the credit bureaus, right? And that's included with the membership. So the client don't have to pay for the attorney representation. So when things, situations like that happen, they can step in even for debt harassment. So there's so much value that we provide. Um, credit monitoring, that client can monitor their credit 24 seven and see exactly what's going on with their credit score. Debt payoff, so they have any current debt, they wanna pay off in a faster manner. They can plug in already current debt and we'll give them a game plan on how to pay off the debt faster. Um, identity monitoring, identity could be protected which is key because I was a victim. I check my credit every day. I don't know about you guys. Before I brush my teeth, I grab my phone, I'm checking my credit, right? Even before I got involved here is because I knew how much credit, you know, play a part in everyday life, qualifying for certain things, right? Um, it is unique credit for everything. So, you know, I even have someone trying to steal my identity at one point. You know, I'm actually from Miami, but I live in Tampa now. How many of you guys been in Florida? Who, who been in Florida here before? Who been in Florida? Who's been to Florida before? Me, I have. I'm from Florida. Who's from Florida? I'm a native. Who's from Florida? I am. I'm Shelly. I'm a native. Shelly, what part of Florida are you from? 
Jacksonville. Oh, uh, okay. Awesome. Awesome. So you were, you're in um, Indiana now? No, I'm in Louisville. Oh, uh, Louisville. And then my mom lives, and my mom lives up in the Spring Hill area up in Hernando County. Spring Hill, Florida? Yes. Okay. Okay. In Hernando I'm, County. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, uh, I'm in Tampa. So Spring Hill is probably like yep. an hour away. Uh, 30 minutes yeah, away. about 45 minutes, about 45 yep. minutes north. Yeah. Awesome, awesome, man. Awesome. Awesome. So we got some Florida people in the house. Um, but, but yeah, so I'm here in Florida and it's a quick story. You know, I'm from Miami, actually, you know, everyone goes to Miami for vacation. You go to the beach for food. Um, but man, I'm telling you, I don't know what they do down there, but they be doing a lot of crazy stuff. Um, literally, you know, I left Miami like about, about 13, 14 years ago when I went to college in Tampa, I went to USF. And I just never, you know, moved back since, but I go visit my family. I go visit time to time. Now, one day I'm, I'm literally driving from Tampa, me and my wife driving to Tampa, going to Miami. As soon as I pull up in the Miami city limit zone, I get an alert, uh, your credit been pulled, you know, from direct TV. I'm like, man, this is crazy. This is actually why I don't come to Miami. I stayed that because I was driving there. It was a funny story. Um, Miami do a lot of crazy stuff, uh, really fast paced place. But, but that goes to show like, you just never know. Like luckily I have my identity protected, you know, because yes, it, you know, you have good credit now, but you want to protect it as well because someone could just use your credit without you knowing it could damage your score. Because at one point I remember someone um, literally years ago, someone used my information, I check my credit every day, so important. When I was in the first uh, process of buying a home in 2014, I was buying my first house um, I was going through the process and I was going to go through the lending process to get pre-approved and I'm going through everything to get pre-approved. I had the income, I have everything. I had a 700 credit score and literally someone stole my identity and my credit went from a 700 to a 500. And I came about a house room. I had to wait literally like three months to, you know, get my house. I had to do a police report, things like that, you know, so that's why I always love that we have the identity protection, you know, because you just never know. Going through the home buying process, it could just mess up the whole deal, you know, because that's what it did for me at the time. And you know, I going through the process and literally I had a 700 and then boom, you know, went down to a 500. But now that's all I always love to have that new monitoring on my credit card. You just never know. So that's included with the services. The client don't pay extra for that. Um, we give them a net worth calculator, can calculate the net worth, a will and trust power attorney. Obviously, most people are looking to use their credit to buy an asset so they can use the will and trust to protect it. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I didn't have a will and trust before I came involved in this company. Just was not talked about in my household. Right. So. The fact that we offer that, I saw a value in that. You know, me being married, me having a son now, I see value in that. Especially when you have a, a house, you want to make sure you decide who the assets, your assets go to. Same thing for your clients. And sometimes you guys may be dealing with first-time home buyers and people that may have the start of a family. Uh, so that's included as well. We don't charge them extra for that, but we just know the main reason why people are looking to restore their credit is they're looking to make purchases. So that's why we mentioned that we're not just a credit restoration company, we're a financial literacy company. Right, that I didn't buy because a lot of stuff that we're talking about is not taught about, is not educated in the school system. I didn't learn this in high school nor college. So um, this is services, like I mentioned, where we help people with, we educate the clients um, about credit as well too. So that way they know how to maintain a credit score um, while they're in that program. Um, now we give them that education as well. Um, also, we give every client their own dashboard and portal system, which I'm gonna show you. Right, so they can monitor the credit, see exactly what's going on with the process 24 seven. We have customer service Monday through Friday, um, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. So, you know, and I'm gonna talk about certain aspects of what clients need to also do because a lot of people think that it's just removing negative items off the credit report and they're gonna have a 700. No, you gotta have some positive credit history and reporting. But we educate clients about all of that. Here, they have a mobile app they can download on their phone. So we're really big on communication. They get push notifications. They can call customer service Monday through Friday. They'll get emails with updates. Um, with everything. So we got everything really, really hands-on to the client know exactly what's going on with their credit. Another great tool that I love, a lot of our real estate partners love and our loan officers love, even I love, <laughs> is ways to build credit. Because just like I mentioned, people think of just new negative items. I had a perfect example. I had a client, she had no negative items, but she got denied because she didn't, she got denied when she was looking to buy a house because she didn't have no positive credit reporting, right? And we have a program which is called Credit My Rent. You guys probably heard a different version of this we could actually report rental history onto the credit report. You could go back as far as two years of rental history. Most people looking to buy houses, they're renting anyways, right? So they can use their rental history and put this on the credit report. And typically, most people pay the rent on time. That's the biggest thing people pay. First they rent, then they pay their cell phone. <laughs> they rather make sure their cell phone is stayed on, right? Like, man, I could live without a car. <laughs> but most people wanna pay their rent. 
So we can put this on a credit report. Typically, the score would increase anywhere from 50 to 100 points once they report. This reports the Equifax and TransUnion. The company is working on experience. Um, but this is only $9.95 a month. This is a, a value to me. I just see this value because you know this will help that person build a positive credit history on their credit report. So if they need a way to build up history, they can use this tool. Now I can put them in a position to qualify. Prime example, I had a client, she had a 550 credit score. She had like a medical bill collection. We got that off. And when it comes to medical bills, kind of give you guys some background. You guys are educated and you guys know a lot about credit. You guys are in you know, real estate profession. But when it comes to medical bills, we leverage the HIPAA law, right? Privacy Act. When these items shows up, you know, these collection agencies and these credit companies, there is all business, right? So medical bills should not be on people's credit report for one. It violates the HIPAA law. So when that happens, you bring it to the credit bureau attention, by law, it has to come off the credit report and never could come back. Because when anyone go to the doctor or hospital, they never told the doctor or the billing team, hey, yeah, report this to the collection agency. Let them know I was here at the doctor's office for a visit or let them know I was at the hospital. Every time you go there, they have to have you fill out a privacy act form. Who do you want to share your medical records with? Your spouse, your other doctor, a specialist? Yeah, yes or no. So when that happens, it violates that law. Right, and obviously, the hospital, we all know it's a business. They're gonna get paid from somebody. Don't get paid from you or your insurance. They're gonna sell the bill to someone else. And that collection agency will just harass that client to get it off, but it's against the law. Obviously, that's why we leverage the Fair Credit Reporting Act and we're able to leverage the client's right to actually get these items off so they can maintain great, great credit. So this is a great tool. Um, a lot of our partners love, and this is a great weapon because when I had that client with the medical bill, we took it off her credit report, but she still was at a 500 credit score because she had no positive credit reporting. When she used the credit my rent, she used our secure credit card program. She went through a 750 credit score within 30 days. Now she get a proof of anything that she wants to, to borrow her credit. I want to kind of show you some testimonies, um, some of our clients' results using our program because people could come and be like, yeah, we can help with their credit. This is what we do. Again, like I mentioned, we've been around for 17 years. So we've been around everything. Um, so now this is some of our results here in Florida. This client here used our program. Their credit score within about 90 days improved over 100 points right here. You can see this is my wife right here in Florida and Tampa. This is before it was able to build the house from the ground up brand new, right? So they was able to use our program, build the house from brand new ground up. And this is their my 90 brand new house. Right, all because they both had great jobs. One of them actually worked, I think, for a USAA mortgage team. I think, I think it's um, Navy Federal. I think she worked for a mortgage company, actually. Wife, Aline. Right, they both had great jobs, great careers, but the credit was holding them back. They didn't know what to do. Came across a company, got them on the services. Now I was able to get them to a home, which is, which is great. And I, that's what I love. That's what I love what we do. It's not just about getting people enrolled for money and things like that. I'm going to talk about the cost of how much everything costs. But the biggest thing I love is that seeing people get into their homes getting text messages from my clients saying, look, my credit went up this amount of points. Like, I just love that, to be honest with you. I love, I love, I love what we do. Uh, so now when it comes to the results, you know, I'm really big on that, you know, documentation be conversation. None of our other clients' results here in Florida use our program, credit score improved over 100 points. It was able to buy a house. Um, this is actually one of our partners in South Florida. Um, he, you know, was able to go on Steve Harvey TV show and educate millions of viewers about our company about how credit score is calculated because again, a lot of people don't have this education. You know, just imagine if a lot of people got taught credit in the schools and that was part of the curriculum, a lot of people will have great credit to qualify for homes or cars or whatever they want to get credit for. Um, but this is why I love what we do because we just educate people as well too by what we do when, I, when it comes to the credit side. So um, just educate millions of views about our company, about how we help people with credit and getting them positioned so they can qualify. Uh, we do give back. Um, so every client that get on board in our program, we take $2 out of the protection plan membership and donate to our nonprofit organization. And we educate the youth from fifth to ninth grade on personal finances, budgeting, um, credit as well. And we do this all the way to 50 states. We're transitioning to virtual, obviously, because of COVID was going into the schools and educating the youth. And also we have a scholarship program. We give money out every year. We've been giving money out. Um, and we gave $400,000 last year in 2020. Uh, this year, this past February, we gave $600,000 in scholarship money. So every client that get on board, a portion go to our nonprofit organization and we just give back to the youth. So now high school students, um, seniors that have a scholarship that could go towards college or freshmen in college could use some of the funds um, to be able to go to college, whatever they want to do with the money that our, our company gives them. So you guys get to be part of something that's big and I think next year, 2022, I think we're going to be giving the million dollars. We gave 600000 this year. I think we're going to be giving a million dollars. Another thing I forgot to mention, my clients, I love our company. I mean, we're really big on giving back. We're even giving, um, we're even giving, uh, 
we're even giving uh, $1.5 million away to our clients. So we're choosing people who've been on our program a certain period of time and our company is just choosing random people. They're going through a list and we're just giving money away. Um, we're giving a, yeah, well, $1.5 million um, to clients that's on our program is giving back. So now what I want to talk about the cost of this is only $188, $89 a month um, for the clients to use this program. Really, so really affordable. Um, we do not put them into no contract. So it's on a month to month basis. Once they satisfy with the results, they can opt out the program at any point in time. Once they satisfy. Um, uh, so that's great because most people don't want to be in commitment. 45 to 90 days, they'll get results of the program. What I want to do is actually show you guys an inside look of everything. So you guys can actually see, you know, what the client receive um, as well when it comes to the program that they, they're going to have on, a, on our uh, services. So give me one moment while I, while I share my screen here. Um, so you guys can get, get an inside look of what the credit monitoring service and what that looked like for the clients um, that we give them. So, so this is our dashboard here. So this is our website, UCS Protection Plan. So every client has access to this as well. Um, we give them a username and password. Me as an agent with the company, um, we have a way where we could use the services as well too. So this is gonna be an inside look of my dashboard. Um, so as you can see here, this is the dashboard here. Every client will have this. And also we could download this on a mobile device as well too. So they'll be able to start the credit restoration process. We explain exactly what we do to help them with their credit. Very first thing, we're gonna review the credit for them, see what's negative on the report. If we have the drafting disputes and need to be sent off to the credit bureaus, we'll do that. The client will be able to review it, analyze it, and those get sent off to the credit bureaus, um, sign them off, and any results that the client get back from the credit bureaus, they just let us know. Um, you guys will have a system, if you guys do use our program, to monitor your client, pro client progress and see where you are on the program. Um, so we explain step-by-step -step process and what we're doing for that client credit. So it's not a guessing game, very transparent. We have a video that even explains the whole process of what we're doing for them. Um, we give them different things, but we're going to educate that client about credit to understand credit so they can position themselves, all this included. So just imagine that you guys will have to do none of the work. You guys don't have to, you guys have to look, I got a, a company that'll be able to help you. Um, so you got to do none of the work when it comes to that as well. So now you know your clients will be in good hands and you can track the progress on what's going on for your clients. Um, so all the service I went over, all this is included. We don't charge extra for, extra for none of these. All these are included while we're restoring the credit for that client. So they have access to our credit attorneys. Um, they have the credit monitoring that I was talking about. They can monitor the credit 24-7, identity monitoring as well. So now the credit is being protected. And I love this identity monitoring because it comes with a million dollars in coverage. Um, so they're very far victim. So identity theft, they'll get reimbursed for anything that happened while they're activated on our program. They have access to this is included for free. Um, so now this credit is being protected. Life insurance is only for agents with us. We give them free life insurance up to 100,000 in coverage, term life policy. We're getting really big on financial literacy. So all the services included, this is what clients will receive. So we give them step-by-step -step exactly what's going on with their credit. And we give them a roadmap. You know, we mo know most people's goals are, hey, look, I want to purchase a home. I want to make purchases. We give them a roadmap to their goals. Very first month, we want to start working on the credit. Second month, start doing a budget, adding positive history on your report, um, pay off any debt that you have. And yeah, so we give them step-by-step -step blueprint to their goals, so what they're trying to do. So this is the client portal system that's here. Um, us as an agent, we have our own account. We'll be able to see everything that's going on um, with that client um, process. So this is actually my account here. This is a secure credit card. So we actually, a client that need help building up the history because some people don't have no negative items. We all know having no credit history just is like having bad credit, right? So it's not, it, it just makes it difficult to qualify. So how can you be trusted? Starting off with a secure credit card that could build up some history. Typically within 30 days of reporting, this right here would, um, report on the credit report, and this will give them a credit score. There's no minimum credit history um, that's needed for this. So if you have any, because some secure credit card companies, they do check your credit to see if you qualify. I have plenty of clients that got denied from their own banks because they have bad credit, right? So it's difficult for them. But our, this company here is partnered through Sonova's Bank, um, lowest interest rates, 11.9%, um, and it's guaranteed approval. The minimum to put down is $200 for this card. They get approved within 30 days. They should say increase. They mean anywhere from 100 to at least 200 points if they have no negative items and need to build history. Um, this is a great tool to help them get their credit in position um, as well. So I can actually track everything that's going on when any client that get on board with the program. Um, just for example, kind of show you, we have um, everything organized and structured. So I can go to my reports. I go to my reports and see exactly what's going on. Any client that I plugged in um, to the system, I can see where they are, see what's going on with the client. So this example, everything is kept confidential. Only thing that we see is the name, phone number, email, 
When it comes to the credit score, we don't see none of that. Our backing team, credit attorneys, credit team, they see that. We don't see none of that. So all I see is when they first started on the program, um, when they got on board, right? And I could see what negative items that they have. So I could go here and I could see how many negative items that they have. And I can see what the process that they're going through, right? Um, I can see what process that they're going through. So for example, our system is really detailed. So I'm gonna go to Cassandra. Um, she got started on the 16th with us. All I do shows her name, email, phone number. This, this is Steven I selected on, but this example I wanna show you. So Steven started with us on the 16th. He gave us permission to review his credit. We classify every negative item on each report. It shows how many negative items he have. Three on experience, three on Equifax, three on transgender. He started with us on the 16th. On the 17th of April, we already have disputes already getting sent out to the credit bureaus. That's how fast our system is, right? So I can see where he's at with the process. I don't have to, it doesn't show me his credit score. He can see his credit score, the client and our backend team. But for me, I want everything to get confidential. But, and then also I can see where it was going on. So now I can see he, he started a credit process with us, the 17th, he got started with us the 16th. On the 17th, where we got disputes getting sent out. That's how efficient our program is. And this is why we get clients great results because our system is really, really efficient when it comes to um, seeing what's going on. And this is all the clients, this is within the past two weeks that was able to help. So just imagine all your clients that got denied, go plug them into a system within 45 to 90 days, we get them great results on our program. Same thing here. I can see how many negative items they have on each credit bureau, we classified, disputes get sent out. You know, so again, um, everything is just really systematic. They can see, the client can see that everything that's going on with the credit. And then also I can see what's going on with the process to kind of get everything rolling for them so they can be able to qualify um, within the program. So um, we got two parts to it. So first part is you guys can refer clients to us. I know um, Dendrick Vance, um, he's a real estate agent with you guys with Curly Williams. Um, he's a partner with this as well. So he's able to refer his clients um, to help his clients qualify. So you guys can refer to our company, um, and but also you guys can partner with us where we do uh, pay you guys for any referral that you guys do. You guys will have a system set up like this. So you guys have those two options. Um, we'll pay you $100 per referral you, you ever send over to our company. Our company will pay you $100. Um, and we set up a direct deposit. And our company sends out direct deposit every Thursday for any referrals that you do. Um, so this one, I'm gonna kind of show you this, what, how we're able to leverage this program um, to help sell more homes. This is my wife's Instagram account. And um, again, we do training on the services so you guys can be more knowledgeable. Um, again, about the services and products. And again, we know everything is online now, right? Everything has changed, especially even with COVID now. <laughs> Everything's more virtual, just like how we connect now. Uh, this is her Instagram here. Uh, she's able to, you know, now leverage our program to help her clients with their credit. So not only that, she's a real estate agent, but now she's able to her clients with their credit as well, too. Now she's able to get more qualified clients. You can see she just able to do a recent closing with other clients who's able to help. So just imagine. You know, I see some of the checks, I mean, you guys make great income. <laughs> um, you know, on average, let's say a closing for you guys anywhere from three to 9,000, right? Let's say you're able to do 10 closings in a month. What would that do for your income, right? Because now you have a solution for your clients. Or you could do 15 closings a month. We know it's a process of getting people qualified and approved, but some people are able to do 10 closings a month, 15 closings a month, you know, now. But now just able to help increase or do more closings because now people that don't qualify, she could plug them into the program. Um, and then now to qualify, and she doesn't have to only solely depend on her real estate closings, right? She any referral that she does with us, our company pays her hundred dollars for referral. So if she referred ten clients. Our company will cut her a check for a thousand dollars. So she's not always depending on the real estate closing, but just kind of helps out with these different day to day things as well too. So she's able to do another closing here, but now it's helping her do more closings because now she has a solution for her clients. Um, you know, so again, that this, this is a great tool and program to be able to help your clients qualify. Uh, help them get into a home that they want to get into. Um, this is actually one of our other partners who partnered with us. Um, she's a Kelly William agent out of Jacksonville. Um, she Before she got on board with us, it was very difficult for her to kind of get things going in real estate for her. But a lot of her clients have credit issues, credit challenges. And she came across our, our company. Within like a week, she was able to plug in 10 people that couldn't qualify for a house. Right? So now in the future, once their credit got restored, she was able to put them into a home. But not just that. All this client that she plugged into our system, our company paid her hundred dollars. So she made a thousand dollars every following week, but now she's able to do more closings. Now, as you guys can see, she was able to do a closing, I think maybe I think it was last month, two months ago here. Um, but she was able to do more closing now before when she first started as well too. So now she's able to sell more houses. Now she can let people know, look, if your goal is to, her goal, look, I'm looking to help 30 families become homeowners. If your goal in 2021 to be able to purchase a home, but your credit is holding you back, I have a solution for you now. 
you know, so now she has a solution for people that's looking to purchase homes. Um, now she's able to do more transactions, So now she has a solution for people that may get denied for, you know, qualifying for purchases of home, you know, so, you know, again, I mean, this, this is a great tool I think would be great for you guys and, and Vance was able to leverage this as well to help a lot of his clients who couldn't qualify and now he's able to get them plugged into the system. So within 45 to 90 days, now he'll be able to get them into a home that they want to buy. You know, so we can definitely show you guys how to do the same thing within our program um, as well. And, you know, we, we do a lot of training on marketing and things like that um, as well, because we want everyone to be successful, especially you guys. We want you guys to be successful uh, when it comes to your main business that you guys do, which is real estate. So um, that's everything. Hope I was able to kind of answer any question that you guys probably had and thinking about. Uh, but any question that you guys want me to answer um, or ask me, uh, you guys can ask me now. I have a question. Do you work with Tiffany Renee? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, yeah. Tiffany Renee. Yeah. Okay. Are you all uh, the same credit company? Is same, same company, company, but we're different teams. Same okay. Company. Okay. You know okay. I've talked to her. I've talked you to did? her before. Okay. Yeah. okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yep. Um, and she's, she, she's, I think she's with you guys as well, too. Yeah, she is. Um, and we're also in the Black Girls in Real Estate thing, so. It sounded wow. familiar, so I was like, oh, okay. Wow. Small world, right? <laughs> yeah, I think I did. I think I did something with her. Um, I think I did a thing with her as well, too. Okay. Gene? Yeah, I'm here. What is the best, what is the best way to uh, reach out to you if we want to get more information? Um, the best way, uh, you can reach out to me via email uh, and call me. I'll put my number here. Um, are you guys are the same? Just so I can know, are you guys at the same um, office that you guys work out of? Well, we are not. No. So this is five different market centers. So we are right. in uh, Indy Metro South, Indy Metro West, Indy Metro Northeast, uh, Greater Columbus, and Louisville East. So three Ooh. states, five market centers. Uh, and in addition to the agents that are on here today, there are actually 86 agents in productivity coaching. Not everybody comes to Saturday morning workshop. So everybody's gonna get this video as well. Wow. So, oh. so Eugene, if you have, I don't know if you could share your slides with me or something, if you have a, a flyer, yeah. Yeah, that I can send out to everyone. Correct. Um, Cause, because I think this is really awesome. On, on average, Eugene, how long do you, if let's say that you need, you needed to increase your credit score by a hundred points. How long does that normally take? Um, it could take just depending if 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 a client didn't have no negative items on their credit. Uh huh. If they had no negative items, no collections. Well, tell me either way. Okay, so they didn't have no collections. If they didn't have no collections, we could get that person credit improved literally within 30 days, 30, 45 days. And the reason why I say that is because if they had no collection, you guys two scenarios. So the person that had no collection say, look, I need to increase my credit score typically within 30 days. Because usually there's two factors. And that's why I love an educational component. Now, because credit score could decrease if people are using their credit cards, right? So now they're using their credit or cards. Or they pay them off and they close them, right? Yeah, we like the, I, we advise not close out your credit cards. Isn't that crazy? That's so counterintuitive, right? You, you close <laughs> it, it off and they, they, they ding you for it. Yeah, they ding you for it. And what happens is because you lose the history, right? Because, you know, when you have credit, you have five years of that credit card that it was open, 10 years. And when you close that credit card, you lose all of your history because the history is 15% of your credit score calculation. So when you close out a credit card, you lose your history. So we recommend clients pay down, don't pay, you don't have to pay your credit cards all the way off, but pay it down at least 20% um, utilization or even 30%. You know, for example, a person had a thousand dollar credit card limit. If they go over $300 on that credit card, their score is going to decrease. They have to keep it 30% and below the credit utilization. So they want to use no more than, you know, a, a $300 on a thousand dollar credit card limit. So now that person could pay down their credit card. They have high balances and your score will go up. And typically credit cards report once a month. They have different days that they report to the credit bureaus. So depending on that day, they're just going to report that they paid it off. And usually within 30 days, that credit card company would have report. For example, this Capital One, Capital One, for example, would probably re report the 15 of every month, right? So let's say they made that payment within 30 days, that score should update and reflect that they made a payment on that credit card and the score is going to go up. Second thing is if they need to add um, a line of credit, now, 
They can use a secure credit card program and that reports to the credit bureaus again within about three to four weeks to the credit bureaus, let them know they have a new line of credit and this is how much the credit limit is. Anytime someone has a line of credit on their report, that's gonna help with them building up their credit score as well too. And then also with the credit my rent program that within 30 days is gonna reflect on their credit and they're gonna see a score increase anywhere from 50 to 100 points as well too. So usually 30 days, if they have no negative items, you know, those methods there, their score is gonna go up. Um, if they had to pay down balances, 30 days is gonna report. Same thing with adding a new line of credit. We can help them with the credit my rent, and then we can help them with the, um, we can help them with the, uh, the secure credit card. Now, if someone have negative items on their report, so this is the second scenario. Now, wanna say 45 to 90 days. I would like to say 90 days, they'll see results um, with the negative items coming off the report. Now, typically, once items begin to fall off, they will see anywhere from 50 to 100 point increase, right? Um, and then the client just have to make sure that they have positive credit reporting on their report. Uh, but typically, 90 days, they'll see, you know, negative items fall off the report and they score increase um, as well. But if someone needs to build up, uh, you know, their score, the quickest way is adding a positive trade line on it, like credit my rent, um, and then also going through the street process to clean up the negative items. But typically, 90 days, Clients see a significant increase on a credit score is usually 50 to 100 points because, you know, one late payment could hurt a person credit score by 25 points. Um, I had an example. I had um, a young lady. She didn't have no collection. She had one late payment. She got to pay it going through COVID. Uh, her credit card. And she's looking to buy a house. And I advised her. I said, "Look, uh, do a goodwill letter. Um, let them know stuff happened. COVID. You forgot bills. X, Y, and Z. Goodwill letter. Let them know. Hey, look, I've been paying my credit card on time." Because of that one late payment, she was at a 700. When that late payment hit her credit score, she was down to a 650, a hard drop. So I had to do the Goodwill letter, she sent it in. Within 30 days, her score went back up. The credit card company decided to take off that late payment. So um, one late payment could hurt someone's score by 25 to 50 points. Um, so things like that that we can help with. Um, this advice that we have Goodwill letters um, within a protection plan, let that client know it has a template laid out for them. If they have, you know, late payments, they can use our Google letter to be able to uh, send to the creditors to see if they will take off any late payments. So different methods we'll use, but they get all in our protection plan that we, you know, let them know these different things that you could use. And, and so like when you guys have weapons that you guys can leverage to be able to help your clients and, and put them in a better qualifying position when it comes to their credit. I love this. I have a quick question. Sure. Do you, do you guys offer any type of guarantees or is it just based on what the client does? Great, great question. So unfortunately, no company, credit restoration company can offer guarantees. It's a law called CROA, CROA law. Um, and the reason why is because we're dealing with the credit bureaus. So the credit bureaus have their own timeline. So no company could guarantee. You may have some smaller companies. I try to go on the radar and guarantee results to get people to enroll in their program, but it's illegal to say guarantees. Um, but we could advise clients if the client have a situation that we dealt with before, let them know, yeah, usually 45 to 90 days, you'll see results in our program. And then you did bring up a great point. A client do have to do some stuff on their part as well too, um, meaning that they got to make sure that they're keeping their balances low. Secondly, um, they got to add positive history because if the client have a whole bunch of collection accounts and we're working on getting that removed, if they're not adding no positive history to it, we can't, you know, add more points to it. Like they got to apply for certain things that we advise them to do. So it does take two parts, but it's not a part on the client hand. They just got to apply for application uh, for any, you know, credit card or um, rental program that we have. And that's pretty much it. But yeah, we'll work on removing derogatory items. But yeah, unfortunately, we can't guarantee. We got to advise them on a timeline, usually 45 to 90 days, you know, three, four months, they'll see results in the program that they're looking for. And just got to make sure they're adding positive history and keeping their balances low. Because you'd be surprised, again, because some people don't know a lot about credit or they never thought about using it, they just use everything cash. So some clients, you know, they would get negative items off and they'll just max out their credit cards. You know, I mean, my score went down. It's like, well, you max out your credit cards, the credit is gonna decrease your credit score. Um, so just kind of educating the clients and that's something that what we do. We do a lot of trainings on that to educate the clients about, hey, look, this is what you should expect. This is also the small things that you have to do. Make sure you pay your bills on time because I even had a client, she used our program. We got her credit to 700. She was able to purchase a house or whatever she needed to do her credit. The following year, she racked up new collection accounts, brand new accounts. <laughs> the following year, she's like, man, I'm back on the program. I made some mistakes. 
And you have some people like that, right? Life happens, but but yeah, you know, it takes two, but yeah, we can't guarantee, unfortunately, it's just because, it, you know, credit restoration is highly regulated. So, um, but yeah, we just let them know, yeah, 45, 90 days, four or five months, they'll see great increase on their, their credit scores. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. I, I will say, I think Eugene was really nice. I mean, there are people out there that promise all kinds of things. Yeah. <laughs> and they guarantee their promises. But yeah. those are the ones that, those are the ones that concern me because this isn't like a magic button. Like yeah, no, can, it's not. It's, you know, it's very much like I say to you guys about real estate. This is super simple. It's just not easy. There's no easy button. And I think credit restoration is probably the same. It's pretty simple steps once you know what yeah. you're doing and what you need to do, but it's still no easy button because you have yeah, to not. <laughs> so not. awesome. Anybody else have questions? I got a question for you, Eugene. Uh, sure. So I want to um, ask you, so what do you do with a client? Um, that has uh, like, say if they got, I guess, negative reports on her and they owe like $20,000. <laughs> How do you handle a situation like that? Is it current accounts? What do you mean? It like like it old collection? accounts that collections on uh, car payments that they didn't pay um, mainly. And um, and pretty much they put it on their credit and they owe like okay. eight, nine, 10. So that's a great, that's a great question. So. So now every situation is different. Um, every situation is different for everyone. So I'm gonna go over some items that we could, anything that's negative, we could address. Um, the timeline is just different for every client. Every situ credit situation is different and we had the exact same credit score. Um, so what we could address is medical bills. Most people have these items we could address. We could address any negative items. Most people have medical bills, evictions, repossessions, um, bankruptcies. Um, these negative items we could address and get removed off the credit report, right? Even repossessions. Um, so it's not like it's repossession. Um, we're going to address that. Now, um, depending on the situation, because we only focus on credit. Now, it's two different things. You have a debt. Someone have debt, then you have credit. We address the credit and get the credit in position. But depending on the situation, you still may be entitled for that debt that they have. When we address collections and repossessions, that's off their credit report. So there's not going to be reflecting once we get in dispute and removed. So they do have collections, um, repossession, we could address it. Now, every state is different. Um, certain states have statutes of limitations on when a company could collect on debt, going through the legal system, going through trying to go through court, which is separate from credit. Um, so every uh, state is different. Some states require three years. After three years pass, that company cannot sue. The, for example, let's say someone had a repossession um, and a certain state say three years. Now, three years pass, that collection company cannot try to sue that individual for that debt. They can just put in a report and that's it. So when we take that debt off, that client decides that they want to or not. Um, if that statute of limitation has passed and they don't have to, because every state has a statute of limitations on when a company could collect on debt um, on it as well too. So again, depending on the situation, um, if it shows up as a repossession on that person's credit report, yeah, we could uh, remove that off their credit. They can move off their credit. Okay. And a follow up on that question, I can. I remember you saying something about a client who, um, if they have no credit, like, mm -hmm. how do you go about a situation like that? Like, they just have no credit. They never use yeah, credit card. Yeah. And that's typically it's bad because they have less than perfect credit. But the good side to it is that the good side to that is we could build it faster. So we, the example that Carla acts within 30 days, that score could go up. So we could add two things to it, a secure credit card, to get you to approve the minimum they have to put down on that is 200. And then the second thing is the rental history. We could put that on the report. And then within 30 days, the score should go up and it should go give them a score. They should be at a 700, 700. If they have no negative item, no history, they put those two things in there, they're gonna be at a 700 within 30 days on that credit. So simple, yeah, you can use our program. And then um, I'm gonna uh, give you guys my contact information also. I know Vance invited me out, so I'm also gonna give his information so you guys could you know, reach out. Um, and then if you guys wanna leverage our program, you guys could you know, use that as well. Then again, this, this will definitely help you guys sell, uh, help a lot of your clients at the end of the day, provide a solution and help you guys increase your sales. It happens to everyone, it happens to my wife. And obviously you guys wanna be able to help your clients but on the back end, you guys are going to reap the benefits because now you're able to get your clients qualified. All of our partners that use this, 
I'm not here to sell anyone. I'm just, you know, kind of give you guys just, you know, a solution. It helps all, all of our partners out. Um, I'm, I even work with a mortgage broker. I'm working with a mortgage broker in Philadelphia. You have a lot of clients that don't qualify. One's clients now, he's able to qualify to purchase a house, right? So um, it's even helping him with people that don't qualify because obviously if someone wanna buy a house, you guys are the move, part of the moving pieces. You guys showing them the house, you guys dealing with the, the lenders and inspection, advising your clients, but then whoever get that person qualified is usually the lender, right? They have to, you know, make sure the credit's up to part to where it needs to go. So yeah, this definitely helped the lenders and um, when it comes to the clients, when it comes to the credit. So, but yeah, what they need to build history, our program will help them do that. The secure credit card, and then credit my rent. You have a solution for them. So you come across people that need that have that, we can help them with that. Any of you guys have any clients with credit issues, we can help with that. Um, we get the credit in position 90 days, there's a significant increase. If they have no credit history, typically within 30 days of using those two programs, their score will go up and they'll be at a 700 if they have no negative items. Because some clients will say, yeah, I don't have no negative items. I have okay credit. And to them, okay credit is a 500 credit score. Or right. wait, okay. they're all they're all completely honest, and they they don't they <laughs> they don't want us to know what's behind the curtain, right? Yeah, you guys are gonna find out anyways. Like you guys find out anyways. You got they gotta get the credit pulled by the lender. Um, <laughs> I love it. So some people are like, yeah, my credit is not that bad. I told the client, okay, you know, what's your credit score? What do you have derogatory? Yeah, it's not that bad. I have a one repossession, and I have this. I'm like, okay. <laughs> um, well, Eugene, thank you so much. Dentrick, do you want to share? I, we got just about four or five minutes left. Do you want to share with everyone what your experience has been? Because I know this has been really big for you with your business. Yeah, it's been huge. I mean, I've added plenty of people to my my pipeline. Um, within thirty, I mean, within thirty minutes of signing up with the program, Eugene can testify to this. I had a I had a new client um, um, that fast, that quickly, and. Um, the check rolled out. I mean, they mailed me a paper check. I have no issues with getting paid or the payroll or anything. Um, I actually started partnering with a couple of lenders, um, one from Ruoff and another from uh, in the Indianapolis area. I can't think of the company right now, but I actually started partnering with lenders as well, just to try to, you know, build up my pipeline as well. Uh, that's the most important thing in real estate is having people in your pipeline that you can uh, reach out to periodically, set up on a smart plan. And, you know, you help them with your credit, they're highly more likely to come back and use you as an agent to purchase their home. So it's like you it's like a win, win, win for everybody. You know, Absolutely. all my lenders, my lenders, you know, my clients, myself. So it's been beautiful so far. And then learning about the credit. I mean, that's so important because like Eugene said, you don't learn this in school. You don't learn this in high school. You don't learn this in college. You don't talk about it uh, at home and your family and family time or whatever. So. I mean, it's, it's, it's very a vital piece of that financial literacy, wealth building and getting people to the next level. And that's, that's what we're here to do is serve. So it's been beautiful so far. Well, thank Shout you for inviting Eugene. Eugene. This has been <laughs> awesome. So, you know, Dentrix in our group, you can always come back to him if you got, if you think of a question today or anybody listening to the video has a question, Dentrix, they can reach out to you and you can either hook them up with Eugene or, but right. Eugene, we, can you email me something that I can send yeah. out? The video absolutely to yeah i can definitely email you i email awesome. you some stuff and then you guys can send it out and everything i'm excited oh uh, yeah. i am too this was great information and, and, and all the time right you guys you call people and they'll come through and they'll say they want they're looking for a rental and you ask them well why would you like to pay somebody else's mortgage and not pay your own and they say well i've got bad credit well i've got a solution for that let's get together right it's just one more way for you to get an appointment and like dentrix said get an opportunity Put it in right. your pipeline and help them. You get to help people. Yeah. So and, and Eugene's so great. Like he's been on me, holding me accountable, uh, sending me stuff to uh, get my marketing on on par, get my park my marketing up to up to par to get clients. I mean, he's been he checks on me even you know non business about non business stuff. You know what I mean? So Eugene is a, a great mentor. Uh, shout out to him. Thank you, Eugene. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Well, thank Absolutely. you guys so much for coming on a Saturday morning. And for everybody else, if you need anything today or this weekend, just text me and be patient with me because I'm going to be painting. <laughs> and I'm moving too. So. You're moving, <laughs> yeah. So be patient with me if you need anything. Otherwise, I'll see you guys on Monday. Remember, Monday through Thursday, I'm on from 5 to 6 for open office hours if you need anything. 
go enjoy this beautiful weather. Eugene, you always get beautiful weather in Tampa. I know, man. Yeah, <laughs> gotta come to Florida. Beautiful weather up here this weekend. So yeah, absolutely. Well, I'd love to do this again. You know, I'll come on again anytime. You know, just let me know. Vance will let me know. I'll come on and you know, get the information to your clients and to your awesome. to your team. Awesome. Yes. Okay. All right, perfect. All right. All right. Bye. Eugene, you the man. Oh, nah, man. Trying to be like you, man. <laughs> nah, man. Congrats like again on the on a on a wedding, and man, I'm excited, man. I'm excited. It's gonna be a great year for everybody. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. We'll talk soon, man. It's a pleasure. Let's make it happen. All right. Let's sell man. some houses. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Let's sell some houses. Do it. All right, okay. guys. Peace.